All right, so today I want to talk about a hidden gem within the ball python market. And if you're like I am, when I first started in, into ball pythons, I had this whole list of all these morphs that I wanted to breed. And it's pretty much, you know, I'd see something on morph market or somewhere else, and I didn't really have the money to invest. So what I would do is I would make a list and kind of arrange them from top to bottom. Of course, the stuff at the top was pretty much the cheapest stuff that I could afford. And there's another list of, you know, pretty much the priorities what I really wanted, but I couldn't afford and at the top of that list was the tri-stripe gene and if you haven't heard of the tri-stripe it's not surprising there's not a whole lot of people actually working with the tri-stripe and believe it or not it's been around for quite a while and I was kind of looking around on the internet as far as what's been done with the tri-stripe and I would say it's one of those genes that is still it's pretty expensive to get into the project but there hasn't been a lot of stuff actually produced there hasn't been a lot of genes introduced into the tri-stripe so it's one of those genes that still has a lot of potential as far as making pretty some pretty good money and as far as you know mixing it with different genes and really I haven't really seen anyone who's actually taken the lead and really beefed up their whole collection on tri-stripe kind of like in my collection here I work with the bamboos like Bobby here it's pretty much like my bread and butter I have one thing that I'm kind of known for is the bamboos I haven't seen anyone actually focus solely on the tri-stripe trying to work it into a lot of other combos to really see the potential of what the tri-stripe can do. So what I want to do is I want to bring you over to the internet. I pulled up a bunch of photos. I want to show you what the tri-stripe looks like. I want to show you some of the history behind it and some of the combinations that have been made and maybe give you some suggestions as to where to go next with the tri-stripe. All right, so I am over here on World of Ball Pythons. This is essentially where everyone lists all the morphs and all the new combos. Everyone kind of rushes over here to post their worlds first so you can kind of see what people have made. And over here, this is the Tri-Stripe. I think this is the original Tri-Stripe actually produced by the Snake Keeper. I think this was back in 2006. So it's been around quite a while. And he actually posted nine pictures here. So you can see it gets its name from these th uh, basically three black lines. One really heavy black line that goes down the middle of the back. And then two smaller black lines that kind of surround it. And it is a pretty impressive morph. It's actually a recessive morph. So you actually need two copies of the gene to actually see the visual uh, tri-stripe here. But I kind of want to scroll through these pictures. It is a really impressive it's a really impressive comment. And the interesting thing is sometimes they have really bold stripes down the back and sometimes they're a little bit broken up. I've actually seen some tri stripes where it actually stops about halfway down. And you guys see the stripes here. This is a really good example of a tri stripe. Some of them are kind of, you know, tri stripe at the beginning and then broken up in the back. And I think it's kind of neat how the, the sides are kind of washed out. The black kind of comes up with these white trim kind of around the black. It is it is a really impressive snake. I think it has a lot of really untapped potential. And I just want to show you a few more combinations over here on the world of ball pythons. So this is the lesser tri-stripe. So the interesting thing is you start mixing it with other combos, and pretty soon it doesn't really have three stripes. It actually just has one stripe down the back, which is kind of interesting. Here's another one. This is a really impressive combo. This is the pastel tri-stripe. And it's, it, it actually has three stripes on this, but it's just one single gene, the pastel, along with the tri-stripe, which is pretty amazing. It looks really bright. I would actually like to see a firefly uh, tri-stripe to actually brighten that up a little bit better. And here's probably one of my favorite combos, the lavender albino tri-stripe. This is pretty crazy. Actually, I saw a video on the snake keeper he hatched out his first lavender albino tri-stripes it is a pretty crazy combo i think this is by far one of the most impressive tri-stripe combos is when you mix it with the albino keep in mind the albino is actually a recessive too so this is actually a double recessive animal and as i was actually thinking i actually have uh, i'm working on uh, a triple hets this year albino pied and clown if i could actually produce a visual I would actually like to breed that back to a tri-stripe and get the quadruple head <laughs> be tri-stripe albino pied clown and then I could produce some stuff like this which would be really cool. 
And I'm not sure exactly what the impact of clown or pied would be on the tricep. It would totally wipe it out and you really couldn't tell if it was in there or if it would change it somehow where you can actually tell there was tri-stripe in there. So the interesting thing is here is uh, another tri-stripe that was imported by another breeder. There's actually multiple lines of tri-stripe. And as far as I know, I'm not really sure if they're interchangeable if you know if, for example you can have like caramel albino and a lavender albino and just a regular albino those are actually not compatible when you mix them together so if you if you took a caramel albino and a regular albino mix them together it would be a double het animal so i don't i'm not sure if it's exactly the same with the tri stripes or if they're all compatible i haven't actually found any information on that but i just thought it was interesting this one actually happens to be the bloodlines lineage instead of the TSK lineage which is kind of interesting and here is another one from bloodlines this is an albino tristripe it's not the uh, lavender albino it's just the regular albino still a pretty impressive snake I think the albinos are really crazy when you mix it with tristripe and and I'd like to see some other stuff mixed in with the albinos to, uh, tri stripes to actually see if you can improve on that some more here's another one here is the maddox line <laughs> of the tri stripe with the butter and you, you know the butter is pretty much the same as the lesser it's just essentially um a, they, they pretty much consider butter and lesser the same genes but you can see on this one it doesn't really have the three stripes again it just has one bold stripe down the back and we actually saw the lesser tri-stripe on the other line, the TSK line, and it actually looked pretty much the same as this where it, it didn't have the three lines. Here is the cinnamon tri-stripe. So the cinnamon just kind of darkens it a little bit. You can see there's still kind of three lines here. And it's funny that the, the middle line is kind of has some spots. And then it has a line on top of the black line, and you don't really see the three lines towards the back of the snake. I've seen a lot of the tri-stripes where pretty much halfway through the snake, the, the it actually stops looking like a tri-stripe, and then the back looks like kind of a totally different animal, which is kind of interesting. So here is just the straight tri-stripe from the Maddox line instead of the TSK. Looks pretty similar, I would say. No, doesn't really have the, the black coming up with the white flames around it. I'm not sure if that's just kind of unique to the certain snake or if it's actually unique to the morph, which is kind of interesting. So I actually came over here on morphmarket.com where they sell tens of thousands of ball pythons. I actually logged in so I could show the, the snakes that were sold, sorted by tri-stripe and sorted by most expensive. So you can kind of see the high end of what these are selling for. I'd say it's a pretty fair price. You know, some of these are selling for upwards of $7,000 or more for the albino tri-stripes. And you can kind of see all the crazy combos, uh, just how impressive it is. The interesting one, I think, is really, uh, I haven't really seen this a lot, the hypo tri-stripes coming out in 2018. And you can see this one actually sold for $3,500 for a female. So, these are pretty high priced for something like that and still getting some pretty good money. And a lot of people, I think, if you're considering buying into a project, a lot of people think, oh, yeah, I'm going to pay $3,500. And then, you know, five years down the road, it's going to be $350. The thing you really have to think, the thing you have to keep in mind is that is the case with really popular morphs, kind of like the scaleless head came down really super fast because it was so popular and so many people were into the project. But something like this, there's not a whole lot of them out there. So I'm thinking if you if you bought into this project, it would really hold its price well over the long term. That's why it's kind of the hidden gem in the ball python market because it's something that not everybody is interested in. There's not a lot of people even aware of it and you're still getting some pretty good prices over the long haul. So from here, I just kind of wanted to show you some of the prices. It comes down to about uh, $2,750, $2,500. And here's the second page over here. You can see on here, there's a, only a total of 91 tri-stripes on Morph Market. And that actually includes uh, some of the hets too. 
This one, I really like this one. Look at the, <laughs> this one's really crazy. Look at the the white and the, the the colors coming up the sides. Some of these are really impressive. And I think it's just kind of like, you know, the, the, the polymorphism within the gene. You see a lot of different uh, patterns and colors that I'm not sure if you can really reproduce it per se. It's, it's pretty unique to the snake. And I think it's unique to the specific lines of tri-stripes too. You can see some of these are kind of produced maybe by the same breeders and they're coming out with similar snakes which is kind of interesting so let's come over here to this one I actually sorted by the least expensive and only the ones for sale so if you want to get into the tri-stripe game there's only 17 available on morph market right now <laughs> there's not a whole lot of tri-stripes out there and the hats start at $350 just for a het tri-stripe and I think you'd be hard priced to find a female that's the problem here so the cheapest female is actually a visual for $2,500 and it looks like the male visuals are starting at about $2,000 for 2019 this one's looks this one looks really crazy this is an awesome tri-stripe I've actually haven't ever seen a tri-stripe that was that dramatic and then some of the hypos you know from 2018 are selling for 3,000 the albino tri-stripe this one this one's kind of cool because it's from 2014 if this one's actually still available <laughs> it's been on there for I don't know how long it's been on there but it's a 2014 so you know it's a male ready to breed and if you breed something to this it'll be het albino het tri-stripe and that might be probably the best way to get into it if you could get into something like that Here's another hypo tri-stripe. This one's kind of, and the hypo is another name for ghost. And the ghost essentially just fades out the, the uh, basically any gene. It just kind of, it almost makes the gene um, the snake look like it's in shed. And it's not really in shed. It's just the ghost gene that's at play right there. So that's kind of interesting. We'll move over to the next tab. So I don't know if you're actually familiar with Morph Market and sorting by the list view. This is really powerful <laughs> going into the list view. So right here, it says grid view over on the, the, the top right over here. And actually, if you're in grid view, which is the default, you can actually click on list view and you can get all this. And the cool thing I like about this is you can sort by weight, which is really cool. You can sort by the, the biggest. So here is a big albino tri-stripe female for $6,500. The other cool thing is is a lot of times they won't actually have a picture. So, so if you're back in this view over here, you're not actually seeing all the snakes that are listed on Morph Market. You're only seeing the snakes that actually have pictures associated with them, which is it probably comes to a big surprise to a lot of people. There's more snakes on Morph Market than you're actually seeing right here on because these are only the ones with the pictures so the ones these are the ones with the pictures and the ones without the pictures so it's interesting some of these you'll click on you'll go to uh, a page where it actually doesn't have the picture which is kind of interesting you can actually sort by picture or no picture here these look like they all have pictures on here some of them don't some of them do and these are all the sold and not sold. The, th the thing I really like about this is is actually when you're over here too, you're looking at um, some of these names are cut off and some sometimes you can't tell exactly what genes are in there. They're like really long names and you can't really tell by just looking at these uh, if what what exactly is in here. But you look over here at the traits over on the right and you can kind of get a quick brief preview of exactly what's been done with the tri-stripe. So for example, you can see het pied, albino over here. Um, you can see <laughs> there's a lot of albino. Uh, here's ghosts. So you, you, there's just a few genes over here. Het pied, uh, pastel, and you can kind of look, there's, there's cinnamon. So, so essentially everything in blue is dominant or codominant. Everything in this kind of a pink color. This is recessive. Anything in yellow is a het. So you can kind of get an idea of, of, of exactly what's here. So there's Enchi and Butter. If you come over here, look at the second page. See, there's Mojave and Hidden Gene Woma. So you can see there's only maybe less than 10 genes. Here's Spider. 
Um, I, I don't. I'm not seeing anything else. Yellow belly. That's that's probably what a total of maybe ten genes total that has ever been worked into this tri stripe that has been listed on Morph Market for sale. So I'm <laughs> I'm telling you, there is so much potential for tri stripe. There's like 300 different genes, and only 10 of them, probably less than 10, have actually been worked into the tri stripe. So you have uh you know probably a lifetime of potential working on the tri-stripe, working other genes into it. I would actually like to see an azanthic tri-stripe. That would be pretty cool. And here's one of my most the most favorite tri-stripes that I've ever seen. Probably can't reproduce it. This is the albino tri-stripe paradox. And if you know anything about the paradox, it's essentially little black splotches that is not genetic that you can't reproduce. So if you bred this to something else, you won't get the black spots, which is kind of unfortunate because it's such a cool snake. I'd like to really see that growing up. It's pretty pretty incredible. This one actually sold uh, for $5,750. There is some incredible potential, not only with the money, but with all the other genes with the tri-stripe. It is a pretty amazing morph. All right, so there it is. That is the Tri-Stripe, a morph with an incredible amount of untapped potential. And you know what time it is? It is time for the question of the day. And Andrew Truax asks, am I completely self-employed with my animal business? And as a matter of fact, I actually do have a day job, believe it or not. I'm trying to squeeze it all in a really tight schedule. My day job, I actually work as a scientist. I actually have a master's degree in organic chemistry. For the last 20 years, I've been an analytical chemist helping bring medical devices to the market, which is pretty interesting. Also helping to, to work on natural products, keep natural products safe. If you go into like a vitamin cottage or something like that, I'm actually working to ensure the safety of all the products that you take, the natural products and the supplements that people take. And I'm pretty much, I'm pretty much to the point where I can actually transition over to a full-time snake breeder. But you know, I really like both jobs and I'm not exactly sure how long I'm going to keep doing both of them and when I'm going to retire from my day job. That is still up in the air. But at the, at the moment, I'm doing them both and I'm having a good time working as a scientist by day and a snake keeper by night. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.